Ha, ah, the FNAF 10 year anniversary just passed a week ago and let me say it was a little bit chaotic and cramped and I wouldn't be surprised if some of the announcements, teasers and news was overshadowed by other things. So that's why I made an iceberg regarding almost everything related to the 10 year FNAF anniversary just in case if you forgot anything. With that including announcements, releases, teases and so much more. So regardless if you're watching this right when the video releases or months from the 10 year anniversary, there's still going to be stuff in this video that I'm sure you won't know about. So without further ado, let's begin. Now if you don't know what an iceberg chart is or how it works then first of all um what the sigma and second of all the top is the most well-known information and as we go down into the bottom the least known information is there so hopefully now you understand how an iceberg chart works because apparently you must have been living under a rock if you didn't know how it does but anyways with that quick introduction out of the way make sure to subscribe if you love five nights at freddy's and let's finally get into layer one my pop goes my Pop Ghost was the first release in the FNAF 10 year anniversary lineup and was finally fully released for everyone to play as it was a demo beforehand. The game released with very good reviews and is a very unique and innovative take on the franchise as we know it, and for that reason it has very different gameplay compared to most if not all FNAF fan games. Reading the game's Steam description, it states the following. Pop Goes is an official Five Nights at Freddy's spinoff series produced by Scott Cawthon and developed by fans as part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. Pop Goes is a short and simple resource management minigame where you can take care of an extremely neat weasel named Popcos. Housed in an adorable plastic LCD toy, your new pixelated best friend will eat pizza, fizzy drinks, and only the best entertainment provided by Freddy Fazbear himself. And if Popcos doesn't receive what he desperately needs, he passes out or maybe he straight up dies, up to your imagination. And don't be misled by the game's surreal premise and its modest gameplay. It is a canon entry in the Popcos timeline, with real lore implications, unlockable character information, and plenty of interesting store tidbits. If you're a fan of the Popcos series, then give it a go. Now, even though the Steam description gives a pretty good idea of what you're getting into, the game is actually best played and experienced for yourself, as it actually has a lot of fun mini games, easter eggs, and more that just make it super fun. The Joy of Creation Demo the Joy of Creation demo was the second game released a part of the 10 year FNAF anniversary lineup and is a recreation of the original and very popular FNAF fan game, well, The Joy of Creation. This time the game is completely remade with a new graphics engine, with that being Unreal Engine 5 and with new gameplay mechanics compared to the old one. The Joy of Creation puts you in the shoes of the creator, a game developer forced to confront the manifestations of his own mind throughout 5 unique levels, each with a unique blend of free roaming and classic sit and survive gameplay mechanics. The game is officially backed by Scott Cawthon as part of the Fazbear fanverse initiative, and even though the game isn't finished, the main office gives us enough of an idea of what the actual full game and gameplay is going to look like, and personally it has me really excited to see what the full remake is going to look like. Even though the game is only in its demo right now and it's just a very simple gameplay, I think it can evolve to something amazing. Yeah. VIP Novel the VIP novel was the third piece of FNAF related media to be released in the lineup, but it was the first ever FNAF interactive novel to ever be released, with it being released just in time for the 10 year anniversary. In this novel, you get to explore the Pizza Plex again, and you the reader actually gets to decide what happens in the story. The book's description describes it as so. Get ready for an all new 5 minutes of Freddy's experience. You the reader are Devin, and you've won VIP passes to the hottest place in town, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. These all you can eat, all expenses paid ticket are guided by a digital companion, Very Informative Pig, and are every kid's dream. But does your VIP host have something more sinister in mind? Well, with multiple endings and two difficulty settings, this one-of-a-kind free ebook is a uniquely entertaining experience for any Freddy fan in the perfect way to get ready for the September 2024 launch of Interactive Novel the week before. As mentioned, the book has multiple different endings, which I won't spoil here, and even includes difficulty settings, which is very, um, interesting. I haven't actually had time to read the book yet, mainly because I'm just so brain rotted I cannot focus on reading for five seconds, but I do plan to get around to it very soon and I'm very excited to read it. Secret of the Mimic Secret of the Mimic was the fourth piece of media to be released as part of the 10 year FNAF anniversary. It was one out of the two things scheduled to not actually be announced until the scheduled date. As on the official 10 year anniversary schedule, it was just called Steel Wool Announcement, so we didn't know what it actually was until now. We haven't gotten much information based on this game so far, other than a small teaser trailer, the fact that it's made by Steel Wool, and that it will be released in 2025. We did get a very ominous summary for the game though, which states, to see the future, sometimes you need to understand the past. A brand new original nightmare in the FNAF universe. To make things even more confusing, at the end of the trailer we get an ever so strange 1979 text appear, which most likely means the game takes place that year. Other than this, not much is known about the game other than this teaser. Scott X Daco Interview 
Now this was posted on the 5th day of the FNAF 10 year anniversary, and was arguably one of the most hyped up parts of the anniversary. There is a lot to be revealed, and a lot talked about in this interview, and some of the more important things are in this iceberg later down the chart, so I'll get to some of these topics mentioned in a little bit here. But for the most part, the interview was exactly like how the first one was, where Daco and Scott talked about FNAF as a whole, and some of the lore, mysteries, news, and etc related to the franchise. Unfortunately, since the interview was almost an hour long, if I covered everything in this video, it would well also be an hour long. So if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend watching it after this video as it is very informative regarding a lot of FNAF related topics. As I said, we'll get a little bit more onto this interview a little bit later on in this iceberg because there's a lot of actually important stuff regarding the interview. So just hold your horses, we'll get to it in a little bit here. Dead by Daylight Collab now this one is very self-explanatory. On the 6th day of the 10 year FNAF anniversary, it was announced that FNAF would be collabing with Dead by Daylight. Many FNAF fans have been wanting this collab for years now, so the fact we're actually going to be getting it is kind of crazy, even if it's in 2025. A lot of other things also happened this day, so don't worry, I'm not going to skip over them, they will just be later down this iceberg as well. Yeah, other than that, this one's just kind of self-explanatory, there's only this image that shows that it's going to be collabing with, you know, Dead by Daylight, so there's not really too much to go off on here. But yeah, if you don't know what Dead by Daylight is, you you should go check it out. The game is actually kind of fun. As long as you're not getting killed by a tryhard 24-7, then it's actually pretty good. Five laps at Freddy's. Five Laps at Freddy's is peak, and is so stupidly brilliant I don't understand why this wasn't thought of earlier. This was the third game to be released as part of the anniversary, and was met with some mixed reviews, some of which we'll get into in a couple layers down. The Steam page describes the game as so. Welcome to Five Laps at Freddy's, the premier animatronic kart racing circuit featuring your favorite and lovable Fazbear friends, sponsored by Fazbear Entertainment. Select one of 12 of your favorite animatronic FNAF characters and race on 16 tracks set across 4 cups. Each track is based on your favorite locations from the Five Nights at Freddy's lore including Fazbear Hills, Midnight Motorist, and more. Starting out on the day shift, a relatively safe place, you'll compete to take first, but make sure you manage your cart's battery power, use too much boost, or take too many hits, and you may end up on the night shift, where not only do you have to worry about winning, you'll also have to avoid an angry endoskeleton who's on the hunt for you. While navigating the tracks, find birthday presents which contain items that can help you reach number one. Everything from the Faz Blaster to the Cupcake Boost. Each item even has a power-up mode, should you dare to risk some of the precious battery power. You'll also find glitched power-ups, which can increase your battery size and your maximum speed, so long you don't get hit and lose some of them again. There's still a lot more news regarding this game, but again, it's later on in this list, so I'll get to it soon. But this game was easily one of the most overshadowed things during the anniversary because a couple hours later FNAF Into the Pit released early. FNAF Into the Pit now this was supposed to be the last and main thing that was going to be for the FNAF 10 year anniversary, but it was instead released early. Like an hour early after 5 Laps at Freddy's released. Now I'm sure many of you guys have already played this game, watched the game, or seen enough about it to know what the point of it is. Or you've probably read the book, but for the people who don't know, I will again read the Steam page description, and trust me, this is the last time I'm going to do this in this video. Jump into the pit and immerse yourself in a new chapter in the 5 Nights at Freddy's universe. Oswald wishes his town and his life weren't so boring. That all changes when he explores the ball pit in a rundown pizzeria and finds himself in the past. However, Oswald's deepest desire will have an unexpected cost. Survive five nights of terror in this chilling adventure game. Travel between time periods, gather clues, and outrun the threat relentlessly pursuing you. Move swiftly and stay hidden, and you may just survive. But be careful, it's not just your own life that's on the line. Oswald's father and children from the past could all meet their end if you don't save them. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this right now, this game was probably one of the best FNAF games in my opinion ever made. It was just so different compared to the rest, and I feel like it actually kind of breathed some new air into the franchise again, and it actually didn't disappoint like at all. All my expectations were met and I'm kind of surprised. I was expecting to be disappointed, but um, I, I wasn't. I, 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 I enjoyed the game. Anyways, I won't yap too much about it right now because I have more stuff to say about it at the end of this video, but until then, let's get on to layer two. New movie teasers. Now, during the whole week, we got all of those announcements. Literally, that's all Layer 1 was. It was just the main announcements for the 10 year anniversary. But during all that chaos and the announcements, Scott and Blumhouse posted new behind the scenes images for the second FNAF movie. For the first image, we got some weird endoskeleton looking thing. Um, I think it might be a part of Endo 02 or Mangle, but to be honest, I, I don't know. The second image was of Toy Bonnie's eyes. Yeah, not much to say about these, they're just, they're just right there. The third one was a face cast mold of Toy Chica. To be honest, I don't know what exactly is being done 
done in this picture. I think it's a face being molded, but I'm not too sure. But that is definitely Toy Chica to say the least. The fourth image is of a guy working. And next to him, there's an unfinished mold of Toy Bonnie's face. And let me say, I don't know how they did it, but it literally looks exactly like the FNAF 2 Toy Bonnie. Like, I don't know how they made it look one-to-one, -one, but I'm kind of flabbergasted that they were able to pull it off. Anyways, the fifth image was of the top half of Withered Foxy's head, which again, looks absolutely great. The sixth picture is of the frame of Withered Bonnie. To be honest, I don't know what you'd want to call that. Maybe the frame of the headpiece or just the headpiece, but I'm gonna just call it the frame. Then the seventh picture is of a fully finished, well, almost fully finished Toy Bonnie head with eyes included this time. And it looks to me that they're either painting it or they're testing paint on it. I'm not really too sure. The eighth picture is of an unfinished head for Toy Freddy. Yeah, not really too much to say about that. It's missing its lower half of the jaw, but yeah. The ninth picture is basically the same as the last and the Withered Foxy one, with it just being the headpiece of Mangle while missing the lower half of the jaw. And for the final one, we can see a lot of the head molds, and most importantly, we can see Withered Chica's head. Yeah, these definitely got overshadowed a little bit because of all the other news, but it was a very welcome surprise that Scott gave to us. Scott Games Twitter this entry is, well, very simple. It's just about the Twitter page Scott made for the 10 year anniversary, where he did all the announcements and so on. To be honest, nothing too crazy or interesting to note about this entry. I, I just wonder if the account will remain active after the anniversary or not, but only time will tell. Fortnite collab. Now this entry refers to how everyone suspected that FNAF was going to be collabing with Fortnite because as previously mentioned, during the lineup one of the scheduled announcements was for a mysterious collab and no one knew who it was. So everyone immediately thought that it was going to be Fortnite for some reason and it became a very popular meme in the community. But as we all know, it wasn't Fortnite but instead something way better and um, may maybe more toxic and it was Dead by Daylight. Scott Cawthon in Streams now during the same day the Dead by Daylight announcement was made, Scott joined various streamer streams and commented in them regarding various things. Mainly he would joke about the collab announcement right before and during the reveal of it. Literally any and everyone that was streaming that day had Scott join in. It was actually kind of crazy because we haven't seen Scott do anything like this in a very long time. So it was nice to see Scott make a little comeback. Also Scott, if you're watching this video, this is your obligation to comment on this video. If you are watching this and you don't comment, then I'm gonna be um... Uh, just very mad. I don't know. <laughs> FNAF 2 Movie Screenplays now during the final day of the week lineup, the day FNAF Into the Pit was supposed to release, Scott instead posted 4 pages of the second FNAF 2 movie screenplay. But in typical Scott fashion, he included 3 fake screenplays. Now if you already know what the screenplays are, then you can skip to the next segment, but if you don't know what they are, I will read them out loud for you guys. And feel free to look at the screen just in case if you get confused. As reading a screenplay is, well, it can get a little confusing. She looks up at Toy Chica confused, and Toy Chica slowly puts her hand on Abby's head. Vanessa watches the monitor through pained breaths. Toy Chica's hand strokes Abby's Abby's head, and Toy Chica's head turns slowly to look back at the camera, at Vanessa. Vanessa is squeezed tighter, she cries out in pain. Okay, okay, please, just don't hurt her. The grip loosens and Vanessa watches Toy Chica look back at the computer. 4AD7X. Toy Chica relays Vanessa's code, accumulating in CD1. Abby enters and looks back up. What now? Hit enter. Abby's finger dangles above the enter key. She looks up at the animatronic for approval. Toy Chica nods and Abby presses. Click. Toy Chica's eyes lights up. You did it, Abby. We are free. And now onto the second screenplay. I never liked this project from the get-go. What the hell kind of idea was it for the US Army to get in bed with a pizza place? Fazbear Entertainment is more than just a pizza place, sir. Waving a hand. Yeah, they're a circus. That's what they are. I still can't believe the government funded the company. The men and the women at the table exchange glances. They're obviously a little surprised to hear that their commanding officer is expressing so many objections to their project. Who ever heard of testing government finance tech on robots designed to entertain kids? Shaking his head. You ask me, Drummond let his sentimentality get the best of him, just because his kid liked those robot animals. Fazbear Entertainment's animatronic tech was way ahead of any robotics that. General Everly snaps forward. He picks up the report and slaps it back down again. But we're not talking robotics, now are we? Thumping at the report. This here says nothing about robotics. It's all about the verticals and wave functions and the the general opens his report, he flips pages and frowns at the one he lands on. Reading, observable effects of unobservable energy exchanges, lifting his gaze. I think they're mentioning remnant in that, um, to be honest I'm not too sure, a little confusing, but uh, definitely very interesting if that is the real screenplay. Anyways, onto the third screenplay. Why would somebody write something like that for little kids? You remember how the little boy in it has all these plushies he loves, but then he gets sick with one of those diseases kids don't get much anymore? Yeah, he gets scarlet fever. Yeah, he's so sick he might die, and he's contagious, and so is everything he's touched. So they have to burn all of his plushies because they're dangerous. With a look of dawning understanding. Yeah, I remember the story. What are you saying, Av? I'm saying these plushies are dangerous too. Somebody should burn them. Mike is parked at a gas station. He takes out his phone and dials Vanessa. Voice on the phone. Hello? Hey, are you working tonight? 
No, I, then I'll be over in half an hour. Wear dark clothing, we've got a job to do. Mike hangs up and gets out the car. He's dressed entirely in black. And finally, the final screenplay. The man and the kids step into a large dining room. Dust shroud tables and chairs crowd the room, circling a motionless carousel sitting in a hulking shadow. The man leads the kids to the carousel. He steps up onto it, helping Gemma up after him. Darren looks bemused, but he hops up as well. The man reaches for a big red button, slaps the button. The carousel buzzes, lights up, starts to turn. Tinny music plays. Gemma claps her hand. Eyes sparkling, she looks at the carousel's animals. The carousel's characters, a brown bear, a blue bunny, a yellow chick, a pirate fox, a gator, a wolf, a hippo, are all brightly colored. They're cartoonish, over the top. A bunny, making a scoffing gesture at the blue bunny. This is fake. Pouting, I want the bunny, daddy. We're not here for a ride, sweetie. This man takes Gemma's hands. He leads her to the center of the carousel. Darren follows. A doorway is set in the hub of the carousel. The man opens it. Beyond the door, a circular staircase descends into darkness. I'll go first. Hang onto the railing. Stay close. The man starts down the staircase. He checks to be sure his kids are following. They are. Yeah, I'm not really good at reading screenplays, so I do apologize if some of this was confusing. Um, that is my own apologies. That's why I said to kind of look at the screen, but uh, on to the next segment. Five laps at phrase bugs and hate. Even though Five Laps at Freddy's is a very fun game, it's not without its issues. Keep in mind that the game is a demo, and most likely all the bugs will be fixed during the full release, but it didn't stop any of the complaints it got. As the title of this entry would suggest, the game has a lot of bugs, whether it be things not loading, game crashing, and so on. To be honest, the only main bugs I experienced was on the main menu, where nothing would load, and on the sinkhole map, where in a certain area of the map, I would keep respawning as if I fell off the map even though I didn't, so I couldn't progress the race anymore. But other than that, I had no issues at all, and I really enjoyed the game. You just gotta keep in mind it's in demo and then, you know, it'll all be fixed, so it wasn't that deep. Yeah. FNAF World 2 this entry actually has two different meanings behind it. FNAF World 2 began to get popular when Click Team posted the Lulbit teaser for what is now known as Five Laps at Freddy's, but before we knew it was actually going to become that, well, many FNAF fans speculated that it was going to be FNAF World 2. And now for the second part of this entry. During the Docko and Scott Cawthon interview, many people speculated that Scott would give an answer for what this Lulbit teaser was, and what it was about, and if it was for this second FNAF World, or if Scott ever planned to go back to the FNAF World franchise again. Inevitably, the question never really got brought up, but Scott said that he might return to it in the future, so we'll just see what happens. FNAF 4 Box Now again, during the interview, Doc will ask Scott what was in the FNAF 4 box, and well, I'll just play the interview for you guys. Help. <laughs> okay, okay, well, I, I, can, I can try to give somewhat of an answer to that, even though it might not be extremely satisfying for a lot of people. So I would I would encourage people to to turn off the interview if if they don't want if they don't want an answer that they might not be happy with. But, you know, whenever I'm making these games, there are a lot of things that are in my head that are just flowing ideas. And when I have them and put them there, it's the first half of something. It's like a, it's like a string or a rope, just like reaching out. And I know that what's there on the other end is there. I, I trust that it's there. I know that it's there. And then whenever I progress forward, the rest of that, just reappears the rest of it appears and is and just fits into place perfectly that's how all my games have been made i i i feel that there is something there and i make the roads to get there for that to be revealed but then sometimes when things do progress the roads aren't always the same roads as the ones that had been planned before and so what that means is even though at the time something was definitely there something was definitely reaching out to be there and I could feel that it was there the progression of the story didn't go there and so I those strings never got pulled on and those uh in the other half of that idea remained in remained in the remained in the ether remained in my subconscious all of that to say there is something in the box but I never pursued it and I don't know if I can find it again and I think that that's the best answer that I can possibly give for that Fetch game. Well, I'll yet again just show you the interview of what Scott had to say about a Fetch FNAF game. All the positive feedback about it. Um, what do you see for the future of FNAF spin-offs, uh, my boy, other studios in the future? Oh, it's definitely a possibility. In fact, um, I'd really like them to start working on Fetch. I think Fetch would make a really good game after this. You know, some stories obviously cater more toward being a good game than others, but uh, there's something really scary about the thought of something 
always being out there and kind of watching your house and then and then trying to come in and do things for you like this is kind of a scary thought the thought that the thought that i might be online shopping looking for a specific thing and somehow something out there is hearing that and receiving that and then gonna come to me sneak inside and, and put it somewhere without me knowing that it was there this is this is a creepy scenario it's a creepy setup and i think it'd be a and i think it'd be a really cool game to have to stop this thing because obviously fetch was out doing a lot of menacing things to have to sneak around a neighborhood and stop this thing that's sneaking around so undetected. I don't know. I think it'd be a really cool game. So hopefully that'll be the next project. We'll see. FNAF 2 Movie Filming Day During the same day of Daco and Scott's interview, Matthew Lillard, who plays William Afton in the FNAF movie, accidentally or purposely teased when the FNAF 2 movie would begin filming. To be honest, I don't know if he meant to say this or if it was an accident or what it was, but anyways, here's the clip of him saying it. I, you know, I'm available, I'm doing a TV show right now, I'm doing FNAF in October, but I'm available. Greg, bro, everyone knows that I'm available. If anyone wants me, they can find me if they need me. Sanchi Plushies not really nothing too crazy in these entries, but now we finally get onto some of the more obscure things that happened during the 10 year anniversary, and to start off layer 4, we look at the Sanshi plushies that were announced. They revealed new plushies and pins for the anniversary, available for pre-order, which include Fredbear and Possessed Fredbear plushies and pins, which are very cute. U2's Tease U2's teased multiple new FNAF products that will be released by the time the video is posted, as it was all teased during the anniversary. The merch drop includes a 8 inch sun and moon figurine, along with a spring bonnie plushie and pin set themed around Into the Pit. Oh yeah, and there was also a Roxanne plush teased, but it was teased on the 9th, so technically it wasn't part of the anniversary, but oh well, I'm gonna include it anyways. FNAF TV Show Another one of the things mentioned during the Daco and Scott interview was Scott's interest on making a TV show based on the Fazbear Fright stories, along with other FNAF related things. Again, I'll just let Scott explain. Yes. Um, and I, know, I know a lot of people say the same. People who loved Goosebumps when they were kids uh, find these really relatable, right? Um, and I know kids at school now read Fazbear Frights like their, their Goosebumps books. And as a kid, my favorite TV show was Goosebumps. Would you ever think about uh, or like the idea of Fast Bear Frights ever being like a TV show like Goosebumps where it's like a series of some of the best stories or something adapted? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and that's something that can definitely happen, um, especially now that the first movie came out and was successful. I think that really opens the door to lots of other potential opportunities. The only thing to be mindful of is I don't want to oversaturate the market and just create too much and i think that um, sometimes sometimes we get a little bit of that where franchises have movies and too many tv shows and it just kind of waters everything down but uh, but i really do like that idea and it, it is definitely something that could happen for sure early releases to be honest, I don't know why I put this so low on the iceberg, but this just references the amount of things that got released ahead of schedule during the anniversary, and I guess it also includes all the things that aren't a part of the anniversary that was FNAF related that also got released, but uh, I won't get into that right now because some of those things are also in the next part of this iceberg. Hex Merch during the week, a lot of prototype images released for a bunch of Hex plushies, along with a lot of teasers regarding upcoming hoodies based on the FNAF 1 animatronics. The plushies include Circus Baby, Glamrock Chica, and I think that's all of them. I might be missing some, but I swear I thought there was more, so um, maybe I'm just getting them mixed up with the other plushies or the Sanchi ones or whatever, but I thought there was more. Maybe I'm wrong. 5 Laps at Freddy's Data Leaks now, we reached the final layer finally. These are probably some of the most obscure things regarding the anniversary, so I doubt many of you will know about these, and even if you do, then I'll give you a cookie. But this is probably one of the most interesting entries, at least in my opinion, on this iceberg, and that's regarding the data leaks of Five Laps at Freddy's. Now, I don't have a lot of information regarding this. A friend actually informed me of this leak and also provided me these images of it, but it looks like Click Team actually has a decent amount of content done for the full version of Five Laps at Freddy's. During this data leak, we got some images of JJ and Golden Freddy, or Maybe they're just reskins, I really can't tell. We also got some textures for the skins of the characters, and it confirms Purple Guy will be in the game along with the rest of the FNAF 1 animatronics. We also got some icons for more carts, like the box cart, Kate Cruiser, and probably the coolest looking of them all, Captain Foxy's Revenge. There was also a screenshot of Lulbit in her shop, which is where I'm assuming you'll be buying all your cosmetics and stuff, um, hopefully there's no microtransactions, but 
we'll see. And yeah, I mean, it's all pretty cool. It was just immediately, unfortunately, overshadowed by, you know, FNAF Into the Pit being released. But I think this is probably one of the coolest parts of the whole anniversary that got overshadowed because this game looks like it's going to be absolutely amazing. And, um, well, I hope I'm correct on that. PAX West 2024 Again, this news came out on the 9th, so technically it's not a 10 year anniversary event, but it is celebrating it, so it does get included. For PAX West 2024, you'll be able to meet some of the animatronics from FNAF, with those being Glamrock Freddy and FNAF 1 Freddy. They will be at the FNAF booth, and you'll be able to, well, meet them. And me, because I will be attending PAX West for all 4 days, and I'll be posting updates as we approach closer to the PAX, so if you're going, you'll probably see me there. As I said, just be on the lookout for updates, because I don't really show my face a lot, so I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know what I look like, but if you guys keep up with my updates, you guys will see exactly what I look like and what I'll be wearing so you guys will be able to know who I am and meet me if you do go. Anyways, on to the next entry. Unknown Teaser now, Click Team released this image a while back, at the same time they released the Lulbit teaser, but no one knows what it's for. It looks like nothing's seen in 5 Laps at Freddy's, and honestly, I think it might be an entirely different project in of itself, but what do you think? The image looks to be an abandoned pizzeria, and it shows two plushies. Other than that, there's not much we can really see, but it does look like completely different from the vibe of 5 Laps at Freddy's, so this is either a easter egg part of the game, or something lore related, or maybe it's a, a level or a map, maybe it's a completely different project, but to be honest, I don't really know. Most FNAF news. This entry just refers to the 10 year anniversary being one of the most busy and chaotic weeks ever in FNAF history, mainly because we haven't gotten this much news in a very long time, if not ever. So I just want to say thank you Scott for creating this amazing franchise, and I want to say thank you to Markiplier for making his first ever FNAF video. I remember exactly where I was when the video released, and I remember immediately reading the title and everything. FNAF has always been a core part of my childhood, all the way down to clicking on Markiplier's first video. I have been a fan of FNAF, so thank you. Anyways, I'd like to say if I missed anything, please just let me know in the comments because I'm sure there is some things I probably did miss and as I said, a lot of things did get overshadowed this week, so just let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this iceberg, you can click on this playlist on screen right now that has all my other iceberg videos in it. If you enjoyed this video, you will like literally every single one of them in there. There's multiple FNAF related ones for hoaxes and tons of other things, so go check it out.